uh, all kinds of other open source architecture and cool. synthesize uh, a live stack. And so I signed him up. And he and started. Is a, a national competition? Yes. So it was cool. open to all ages. Wow. There was no age. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but then since he was below 18, you know, he couldn't get the cash award. He could only get electronic gear oh. for $5,000. Oh, so he I won see. the educational category. Oh. And, uh, was that first place? Yeah. That's great. And so because of that, they're going to give him like a $5,000 uh, uh, award for getting all kinds of electronic equipment. And when he does that, um, you know, that was the idea. There's only so much electronics you can use. <laughs> So the plan is to give that back to the town? No, see if we can, you know, have the town help us set, set up an electronic center where he can donate that equipment and have a center for everybody to come and use all the kids. So, the, you know, the, the STEM, the general idea is science, technology, engineering and management initiatives in the, in the city can be, uh, you know, brought up to a new level you know, if people come and volunteer their time. He's been doing a lot of video game programming. He's already got this app published when he was in eighth grade. And he's been working on a couple of other apps. And he's, you know, so he's got some good experience putting together a whole bunch of these things. So we've got a little mini electronics lab with all the cars. We recycle all the RC equipment we get from Radio Shack from since, you know, he was a little kid. And we just tear it apart. And so it's, what he does is something called hacking, where you, you don't have to invent everything. You can just take uh, pieces of what's there and start putting together new and innovative things with what's already there. And you know, programs like these are very nice because they help you modify and build upon a lot of things that other people have already built. So you know, it's easy to climb already on a on a shoulder of somebody that's done a lot of work rather than having to do everything right. from scratch. So you must be really proud of him. Oh, not you know, just putting some work with him. Not you know, proud is. <laughs> I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm not proud or anything no, like right. that. But yeah, it's, it, it, it's a lot of struggle because nothing ever works the first time around. No, it's, it's and there's a lot of, yeah, exactly like this kicking and screaming. And then when it works, everybody's out there jumping with joy and, you know, it's working. So I think it's, you know, it's just that part that, that looks really nice. We convert these signals into a usable, uh, into a usable numerical format. The ones from the headset? Yeah. Uh, generally, it comes out as a sort of visual. It generally comes out as visual. Okay. Um, but in this case, but in this case, the program I wrote translates into, co aggregates your brainwaves into two values, attention and meditation. And then the program reads those values and determines that what value it should uh, ter activate the uh, prosthetic device. So since it's uh, the visual, since the visual aspect doesn't seem to be working, let's no, jump right. Let's jump right into the. Let's jump right into the prosthetic device itself. Give it a minute. Bas this. Basically, what it, the program is currently doing right now, while I'm uploading the program into the Arduino device, um, I'm just gonna. Here we go. So program is being uploaded into the Arduino device, and now I'm turning on all the oh. software and all that. So right now this is uh, so if you'll uh, look on this if you look on my computer screen you can see the uh, you can see a uh, measure of all the values that are happening. There are four major values on the screen. There's poor quality, which basically said which is basically the quality of the signal. The lower the number, the better the quality. There's the tension, which is actually the aggregated value of three of those brain waves. Uh, meditation, which is the aggregated value of the other brain waves. And they're both in from zero to one hundred. The higher it is, the better. The higher your attention or meditation. The last value is going to be called time. From concentrate on, a, on any number. Multiple. Uh, just concentrate on a single number. Uh, something dull uh, that you can uh, focus on and not really uh, think about other things. I tend to focus on zero because it's a very bland number. So, or but uh, as you practice with it, it becomes easier. So that you can just concentrate, and the device will start working. Um, and yeah, why don't you give her a demo? Maybe you might notice it. that the device is uh, doing one after the other. It's because each of these servos runs independently of the other, so the microcontroller can't get them to work at the same time. They have to run in sequence. Why don't you give it to her so she can try to quiet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> That's pretty
pretty plastic, cool. actually. Okay. So, uh, the, where they explain the competition rules and, you know, what... So, basically, the, 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 pro, the uh, aim of this project was to create a, some sort of medical device that was operated by a microcontroller. The major criteria were innovative, innovation, and innovation, creativity, and cost, cool. as well as utility. How useful is it? How innovative is it? How interesting is the project? Mm -hmm. And does it work? Mm -hmm. And so, my, I think you can see my project works. Mm -hmm. uh, it's relatively cheap. You can have uh, all the entire cost of the, the cost of the entire device is about the same as uh, a high-end iPad. Um, wow. Yeah. In comparison to some of the more ex to some of the other prospect models, they can uh, retail for uh, as for uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, and this was only like This is about eight hundred fifteen dollars. Yeah. Awesome. So it's a very inexpensive device. So the, the basically US the the what makes this device so cheap is that well inexpensive is that it's almost completely plastic. I see. Every part of this device, mm, every part of the all of the hardware is made of plastic. Mm -hmm. The base is PVC, PVC, acrylic, more PVC, and a couple of door stops. Okay. Um, and what are they hooked up to here? These boxes. Um, these are the power supplies. Mm -hmm. I've been looking for a lot of uh. The problem with the, the servo motors require uh, some pretty power, a lot of uh, power to operate mm -hmm. as uh, well as they do because the entire device is about five pounds and each of these servos has to rotate them mm -hmm. um, at an angle. So you're increasing. So uh, basically, the laws of physics say that this weighs five pounds, mm -hmm. but the servos, um, um, especially in third world countries and on the battlefield, wow. where the where um, especially where the quality of the healthcare is either. Uh, very low, or they're not able to get get this high quality healthcare that they need, okay. especially because these prosthetics can retail for thousands of dollars, oh, so uh, so which is so, so which so basically renders them all but impossible, which basically renders them all but out of reach of uh, many residents of these third world countries and even many war veterans who are like who are just returning home and get working for minimum wage. So you're it's, saying someone who's impoverished, who's lost an appendix? Yeah. Could use this just yeah. so they have In the US system. alone, there are 185,000 amputations performed each year. Wow. Yeah. So the rip, so the necessity of this kind of device becomes huge when you think about the global location. In Spain, Spain alone, another extra 5,000 amputations are performed. I'm trying to do so in the town. I'm trying to contribute my winnings to creating this working space because a lot of these uh, houses in Westford are surprisingly small. Oh, and uh, with the recent e uh, economy crisis, uh, there's bound to be some pe there's bound to be people who, uh, with a lower standard with a lower standard of life in Westford than uh, the lucky residents like me. So what I'm trying to do is improve their quality of life and, and help them uh, heart unleash their creativity by giving them all the resources they need free of charge. Awesome. Because I was lucky enough to have uh, people uh, who I, who cared about me uh, supply me with these resources. And enable me to un and enable me to like build this and so what and so that's basically what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do the same thing for someone else. That's great. And did you work with your dad a lot? Um, I worked with my dad a lot on building it. He um he uh, got me a lot of the parts. He helped me uh, put together some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the designs are my own. He provided feedback on them. Um, he provided me. A, he from helped me. Uh, work, he helped me. Uh, machine a lot of these parts. Yeah, he um, does the machine, so I'm a machine shop. I can place his it, fingers and <laughs> rotate the elbow. I'm also trying to get in some wrist movement. And so this is the first part of my wrist bracket. Right now, I can, this entire this assembly can rotate about 180 degrees. I'm also trying to get it to rotate like this so you can knock on, so uh, you can get that door knocking movement and throw in that throwing and discrete kind of sensors to, uh, working, to the working arm. And I have them record the electrical impulses from your muscles, okay. so that um, when your muscles uh, twitch or something, like when you move these fingers, your muscles will send electrical, will uh, receive electrical signals from your brain, and so these sensors will uh, will also receive these electrical signals, and uh, they'll send these signals to the microcontroller, which will uh, operate uh, other servos in turn. And so you think at some point um, you could just in your mind think, okay, shake your the first two months, and, and so I spent a lot. So I spent a lot of nights trying to fiddle with that. Uh, thankfully, my cousin, who he worked is a software engineer at Google, uh, I showed him the code. He managed to fix it. Apparently, what had gone wrong was that um, the program was supposed to follow a sequence of instructions, but it kept getting stuck on the first instruction because there was nothing in the code to tell it to move on. So he fixed that. Cool. Perfect. Now let's just.
put that on yeah, your yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. All set. Okay. <laughs> okay. it up. So I just need to relax. Yeah, that's it. See, you're on. Wait for it. Let me find out. Yeah. I'm brave. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let it go. It'll work. All right, there we go. Pair it up. Give it a couple of minutes. There we go. Here we are. So you go this to. Just go now. Just, uh, just, just, just breathe normally. Okay. It'll get it working. Yeah, there it is. Don't turn anything off right. or on, Shiva. So, yeah, what you're seeing here is your own brain waves. That's pretty cool. So, you're getting the, the tension is pretty high. Your meditation is also skyrocketing. It went down. So yeah. Okay. So, if you get both be on a certain point, you can turn the music on. Okay. So, can't, I have to think. Not about my deadlines. I will think just yeah. about just walk, this walk, just walk, walk. Focus on the colorful walk images. Holes. That's good. Focus on the colorful images. Concentrate that well. Takes a while, it takes a while. Yes, that's that. true. All humans go through that. It's not so easy because your mind is constantly running around like a. But it looks like your attention is coming back up. Attention is skyrocketing. There you go. <laughs> It's so, because you relaxed. Yeah, I did. It's nice. <sighs> trying to like meet a lot of these. Uh, I'm trying to meet a lot of these uh, professors and experts in their field. I went to Brown a few months ago. Set up some correspondence there. Uh, I've been corresponding uh, with, uh, army, with uh, an army researcher, the head of the uh, U.S. Army's uh, Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center. Um, they, were the, par they partially sponsored the contest I entered, and uh, I've been uh, in correspondence with their, lead with their uh, lead researcher and director, Dr. Thomas Talbot. So does he think that he might want you to come to his uh, facility? Uh, maybe. I haven't uh, really. I haven't really asked. I haven't asked him yet because um, the U.S. I'm going to this January uh, to the in San Francisco to the International Meeting on Simulation of Healthcare and Medicine, where I'm going to be uh, invited to show off my device to a bunch of um, medical professionals. Uh, is that through your uh, the prize that you won, or is this? It's part else? of the prize that I won. The International Meeting of San Sim Science. The International Meeting of Simulation of Healthcare. Simulation of Healthcare in San Francisco. That's yeah. so cool. And will your dad be going with you? Yeah, he's got so to. So fun. Um, what do you want to do with your future? What's the plan? Um, I'm not really sure yet. I'm I'm thinking I might uh, I pro I'll probably uh, move into a f robot field of robotics and uh, possibly do some minor in uh, programming. On the side, I moonlight as a video game programmer. Actually, I have an app published on the App Store. It's called Firewall Complete the Circuit. Um, it's currently out now. It's uh, been out since last January. It sold about 80 copies. And what does it do? Um, it's basically a puzzle game where you, uh, destroy certain, where you destroy blocks to connect a circuit. Oh, it's, that's really yeah, fun. Yeah, it's a very, it's very, uh, simplistic and stylized to keep the game flowing smoothly. I'm actually working on my second project right now, a more complicated a game called Time Toad. Okay. Um, T-O-A-D, Toad? Time Toad. More on that to be revealed as I work on it. Yeah.